We've seen the Surface Pro with an ARM processor before, but this time, I think they've gotten it right. There are a few caveats here though, so let's dive in. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. My very first Surface Pro review was almost exactly 10 years ago. We're talking about June of 2014. I have used a lot of Surface Pros, but this one is different. The star of the show is the Snapdragon X processor. This is an ARM-based processor, and this is a big, big change, not just for the Surface Pro, for, for a lot of Windows computers that are rolling out right now. A little background on ARM. Phones initially use these ARM processors because they're more power efficient. The more power your processor needs to operate, the faster it's gonna drain your battery. In phones, battery life is more important than speed. And for a long time, ARM processors weren't as fast as their Intel and AMD laptop counterparts. In recent years, the ARM processors have been catching up. Apple made the switch a few years back with their M-series chips, M1, M2, M3, now M4. They were getting the speed of the old Intel chips, sometimes more, but with way less power drain on the battery. Same speed, better battery life. So for the last few years, Mac laptops have been running circles around Windows laptops in a lot of ways, especially when we're talking about performance and battery life. It just hasn't even been close. Macs are getting like twice the battery life that a Windows PC gets. Microsoft has been trying to make the jump into ARM processors for a few years, a little while ago. It didn't stick when they tried it with the Surface Pro X that had an ARM processor. I tested that one out. It was slow. The optimization just wasn't there. And it was really relying on developers to jump in and recompile and tweak their apps to run on ARM natively. If they don't, Windows has to emulate those applications. And that often means they won't run as fast as they do on Intel or AMD chips. This time is different because the emulation that Microsoft is doing is just way better. And the processor they're doing it with is faster. For example, I installed Clip Studio Paint and started drawing. A few years ago on the Surface Pro X, it was a laggy mess. Today it is quick and it is snappy. Even though it's being emulated, it still felt like the Clip Studio I'm used to using on any other laptop. Plus, and this is a big deal, Battery life on the Surface Pro is fantastic. Where old Surface Pro models, I would expect to get, I don't know, three, four hours of drawing time in, I can easily get twice that here. Six to seven hours drawing on just one battery charge. This puts this on par with using an iPad or an Android tablet. Speaking of drawing, if you've been waiting to take up a new hobby, check out my Learn to Draw in 60 Days course. Every day, you get a little lesson and a little activity. Every day, you build a new skill that builds on the skills you learned before. Anyway, learn more over at bradsartschool.com. Also, there are I have an intro to digital art course and a Procreate course if you're interested in those too. Now, a lot of the apps that I tried worked really well here. Krita was really good. It's free. It's a great place for beginners. Affinity Designer was fun. Affinity has native ARM versions of all three of their apps, Designer, Photo, Publisher. They've had those for years, so you're getting full performance out of the gate. I even played around a little bit in Blender. It shouldn't work well here. I didn't expect it to work well here, but you know, it was okay. I was like, I'm gonna throw something at it that'll bring it to its knees, but no, it, it was fine. Rendering's a little slow, but it's going to be that way on any device that doesn't have its own discrete GPU. The Surface wasn't providing that even when it was on Intel. They did come out with an ARM-based version of Blender for Mac and Linux, so I wouldn't be surprised if they're working on something like that for Windows right now too. And then we have Adobe. Uh, I wasn't able to test all the Adobe apps that I wanted to because they just aren't available on ARM yet. But wait, can't you just let Windows emulate those apps like all of the other apps that I just mentioned? No, you can't. Adobe has their own installer. So unlike Clip Studio Paint, where you can just download an EXE and run it in emulation mode like every other app on the platform, Adobe's installer is detecting what kind of system you're running and then only allows you to run apps that are compatible on your computer. So downloading Illustrator to test it out in compatibility mode just is not an option here. Uh, it's, it's not available, I can't download it. Same thing with Adobe Premiere. I was hoping I could jump in and try out some light video editing, just see how it went. I, I couldn't do it. There is an ARM version of Photoshop. It works great. Uh, an ARM version of Fresco 2, Adobe says Illustrator is coming in July and Premiere and After Effects are coming sometime in the future. They don't have any 
dates on those yet. And then there's apps that I really like uh, that I've relied on in the past, like Adobe Animate and Adobe Character Creator. Those aren't even on the ARM roadmap, so we don't know if those will ever come. Anyway, I had a whole rant here, but I feel like all I've done for two weeks is complain about Adobe, so let's just move on. Oh, I drew a fair amount in Fresco, and I had fun. So there we go. I'm not I'm not a blind Adobe hater. Fresco is great on tablets like this uh, because it feels like you're drawing on an iPad or an Android app. It also works really well. Fresco needs to run in high performance mode on the Surface Pro. That is going to drain more battery at a faster rate than some of the other drawing apps out there, but it was totally worth it for me for some of the features you get, like two fingers to undo and just how smooth you can like pinch and zoom in on things. It just feels so much more fluid than most Windows drawing apps. There were some quirks here uh, that I noticed with the ARM version, like live brushes need a fairly small canvas in order to work. Um, there are probably some other things in here that just aren't optimized for ARM the way they are on Windows yet, but it did work. And it was fun. Now, I am not a benchmark guy. I'm a user experience guy. What is it actually like to use this thing? I did watch some benchmarking videos just to get a feel for it. Like, what are other people saying about it? How are like real tech heads getting into it? I just was kind of curious, like what kind of performance are people getting when they're emulating some of these apps on Snapdragon? And you do take a performance hit like for sure, especially when you're talking about gaming. I was watching the Fox and he, he has an Asus laptop. He was taking that through its paces that it has the Snapdragon processor. He's got some great comparisons down there. So I'll link you to that down below. There's a couple others that are worth checking out. Since many of you, most of you are probably using your laptop, your primary computer for far more than just sketching every so often. Another thing is uh, peripherals that rely on system drivers, drawing tablets, for example those aren't gonna work here. And there's probably going to be some other things if you have things that you rely on that you're used to plugging into a Windows computer. Some of them may work, some of them may not. Seven Pence has a great write-up on his uh, website where he tested out some things on an ARM computer that he's using just to see if they have drivers yet. Well, I don't think Huion, Wacom, XP Pen, none of them uh, have drivers supported for these ARM devices yet. Probably not a big issue for Surface owners since you're planning on using the pen uh, that, that works directly with the Surface tablet, but still something to keep in mind when you're looking at these new devices. But my overall impression when we're talking about the Snapdragon X processors is you have plenty of power uh, and good enough emulation to get things done and I'm just not seeing a lot of lag. But what about the hardware? The processor stuff is fun, uh, but my favorite upgrade is the keyboard cover. Now, Microsoft would have you believe that the Copilot AI button is the coolest thing about the keyboard, but they are wrong. It's Bluetooth. Yay! Yes, I sound like a Muppet when I'm excited. Yay, the keyboard has Bluetooth! If I hit a million subscribers this year, I'll buy a puppet of myself, and I'll do all my reviews like that in 2025, promise. Now, the Bluetooth keyboard is a big, hairy deal for artists to rely on keyboard shortcuts. I was always trying to find ways to do like undos and Photoshop on the surface. Sometimes I was using like a third party remote thing. Sometimes I was finding on-screen keyboard shortcut type tools. Now, instead of folding that keyboard cover over and hiding all those delicious keys, I could just pop it off, set it off to the side and, and just use all that stuff. It's fantastic. This really is a game changer. I can control Z to my heart's content. Changing brush sizes, so much easier. Now. Also, if you think about how you use a computer, how many times am I drawing something and an email comes in and I'm like, oh, I just got to reply to that really quick. I don't have to reshuffle things and pull the keyboard cover back out and reposition everything. No, I, it's right there. I'll just type it out right now send off the email, go back to drawing, so, so nice. The keyboard cover does cost an arm and a leg, $450 with the pen. I could get a really nice keyboard for like, I don't know, like a hundred bucks. You could get something really good. Just use that. So $450 is a little nuts. Apple's doing the same thing with their Magic Keyboard cover. I have no idea what it is about these keyboards that make them so much more expensive. I could understand $200 because you're getting like the hinge and stuff. I don't know, 450 bucks is a lot. Now the little flap that like magnetically attaches to the bottom of the Surface Pro, that now folds underneath the keyboard and that props it up at like a very slight angle for typing, which is just like a nice little design touch. The keys themselves are not bad to type on, especially considering how thin this thing is. There's not like a lot of travel to the keys. They're super thin. And the trackpad is now a haptic trackpad. Uh, I don't remember 
remember if it was like that last year. Hold on, I got one here. Yeah, this is a this is a diving board trackpad on the old one. So that's a nice upgrade. I like it. It's not as nice as the one on the Surface Laptop Studio or what you might find on a MacBook, but considering how thin this keyboard cover is, it's, it's pretty impressive. They've also changed the pen placement. It used to uh, fold up a little bit and the pen would be hidden. Now the pen's just kind of out in the open. They've also like changed the magnets in there a little bit. It, it really holds quite strongly when it's sitting in that uh, like little well. I'm only so-so on the gray cover. It's fine. It looks okay. I wanted to get a blue cover. They sell one of those, but by the time I got in there, those were all sold out or maybe they just weren't available on day one for pre-order. Get the blue cover for the blue surface. I ended up getting a black surface to go with a gray cover. It came in this black box, this beautiful black box. And you pull it out of this black box and you see this like shiny matte black finish on the back. Oh, it, it looks good. I think I made the right choice. I got the blue one last year. The black looks better than the blue. There's also a gold one that looks really intriguing. I saw some pictures other people have shown of that gold on the Surface laptop, and that looks really tight. This is all to say, these are beautifully designed devices. They look really good. Microsoft has really nailed their industrial design. They've even gotten some of the details better. I remember the Surface Pro X had the matte black finish, but it also like soaked up fingerprints. You touched that thing and it got dirty. This is not the case. Of course it takes fingerprints, but if you're just touching it lightly, usually it's okay. Uh, getting those fingerprints off is really easy. So good job, Microsoft. Then there's the screen. The screen looks really great. Uh, you can get an LCD screen or you can get an OLED. The LCD starts at $1,000. The OLED version starts at $1,500. This is the OLED. So when you pair that with the keyboard, you're talking about almost $2,000 for this entire package. There's also a new color variation of the Windows 11 background that really is set off on this OLED screen. It really shows off that color range. Oh, colors go pop good. That was my cookie monster voice. I, I'm kind of warming up to this Muppet idea. It's also worth noting, you get a processor upgrade with that OLED display. So that $500 isn't just going to the screen. You're also going from a Snapdragon X Plus to the Snapdragon X Elite chip. There's also some options when you're checking out to get more storage and RAM on this as well. So the price can keep going up and up and up. Can't believe we've gotten this far into the video. I haven't talked about drawing on this with the pen yet. Because at this point, I'm pretty happy with the laptop. It has exceeded my expectations, but what met my expectations in a kind of meh way is the Surface Slim Pen 2. It is an MPP pen. That stands for Microsoft Pen Protocol. And they just aren't my favorite things to draw with. There are really bad MPP pens and there are really okay MPP pens. This one falls into the bucket of it's really okay. It's not the best. Uh, it's not horrible, uh, but there's better stuff out there. The line wobble that you find on most MPP pens isn't nearly as bad here. The Using the old Surface Pen, which still does work on this device if you have one of those and don't want to upgrade, it works here, but you're going to get a lot more wobble. With this pen, it's far more reduced, especially when you start using brush smoothing, but it does still show up, especially like if you're doing some curves. The angled line tests tend to do far, far better, uh, but when I'm doing those kind of curves, every so often you're gonna see like hiccups and curves, or you're just not gonna quite have the control that you're looking for. I have gotten really spoiled over the last month or two because I've been testing a whole bunch of iPads. Uh, I tested a, the, a new Wacom tablet. I, I tested a Samsung S Pen. That uses Wacom's tech, and after spending so much time with with really some of the best pens out there, I definitely noticed the downgrade when I jumped back into an MPP pen. There are some good things going on here though. There's haptics in the pen. This is something that Apple just borrowed from them or stole from them, if you, if you want to put it that way, uh, with their new Apple Pencil Pro. It's kind of neat because as you draw on the screen in some apps that have implemented it, you get just a little bit of shaking to the pen. So it actually feels like you're dragging across this texture surface, not plastic on glass. Now, like I mentioned before, in most apps, you can turn up the line smoothing and get rid of that wobble, get rid of some of that wave. If I had it up at about 30% Photoshop, I can get pretty good looking ink lines here. But there's some trade-offs there that adds to a lot of pen lag. I was finding that oftentimes I was ending my lines a little bit too early if I started drawing too fast. So I had to slow down my drawing in general to kind of get the lines that I was going for. Even though this pen is accurate, I also at times would find it hard to like line up my lines perfectly. Like if I'm coming around the edge of a shape and I need things to line up, or if I need to go back and like make that line 
a little bit bigger or outline something. It could, the accuracy just wasn't quite there the way it is with like a Wacom pen or the Apple Pencil. So if I take a look at the inks for this panel that I did over on my iPad versus the ones that I did on my Surface, I just feel like I had so much more confidence using the iPad, so much more control there. I'm gonna bring up uh, some inks that I did with the Wacom Move ink a few weeks ago. This is obviously a different comic panel that I did there, but you can kind of see the same things. It's not Windows, it's it's not Photoshop. Uh, it's not just that my handshakes, which of course, everybody's handshakes. It's how much control do you have? And with this pen, I don't feel like I have as much control. You can overcome this pen, but I personally prefer to use something I don't have to compensate for. So the new Surface Pro, I I'm relieved to say that this transition to ARM, this ARM powered tablet can now stand toe to toe or at least almost toe to toe with any other Windows laptop out there. There are some areas where it's just not great. Take a look at gaming, anything where you have to get a lot of performance, but for what I do, art, design, that sort of thing, I'm not noticing a lot of lags. I'm not noticing the kind of hiccups that I saw on the Surface Pro X just a few years ago. Pen? isn't up to what I want it to be, but that's kind of what I expect at this point. But everything else about the Surface Pro, I really like. Not having access to your entire Creative Cloud suite, it might be a problem for you. It would definitely be a problem for me if this was gonna be my full-time PC. If you're in that boat, I would definitely hold off until those apps are ready because we just don't know how long that's gonna take. But overall, I think the future looks really bright. It looks like Windows is finally gonna be able to get the kind of better battery life that we've seen on Macs the last few years and the kind of performance jumps we've seen as well. I'm pumped to see where this goes, see what kind of devices we get, and then of course, to see more developers jump on board and make native ARM apps. This is really good for the Windows laptop ecosystem. But what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.